Well, Paul, thanks um, so much for joining TDN on Zoom. Obviously, you know, it's the new way to communicate with people these days. But um, just before we start, how's everything going? Are you, your, your family and friends are healthy during this third lockdown? Yes, we're all coping well, thank God. And, and uh, we've all avoided uh, the, the dreaded virus to date, which has been great. Um, you know, last year has been a difficult year for us all because I've been traveling quite a bit and I've been abroad quite a bit. But um, but thankfully, we've all managed to stay safe and well. So that that's a good start to the year anyway. Definitely. That's good to hear. Um, well, you mentioned there that you have been traveling a bit and it's um, been an exciting, I suppose, last couple of months. Um, even longer than that, and um, with you starting at Asha Cab Racing, how is that all going, and and how have you settled in? Yes, it's 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 strange how everything evolved, and and, and just before the the very first lockdown last year, um, I had been speaking and doing some bits and pieces for the QREC. Um, I went in February, and just before everything got locked down, we more or less agreed uh, that that I was going to move to Al Shigab. And it took until between getting everything signed, sealed and delivered, it took until June uh, before we, we got it all done and dusted. So it started in July. So it's going very well. Um, difficult year, obviously, because it's such a big international operation, um, you know, with with entities in in France and in the UK, in, in Ireland, uh, also in, in Australia and America. So it's been a difficult year for travel. And really, we've been trying to, from my point of view, we've been trying to, to manage where I'm going and try and work in uh, a degree of quarantine with that and try to meet everything on the right leg really as much as I can. Um, and then particularly with the sales season last year as well, it was a, it was a strange sales season, um, you know, once again, to try and work our way around. But uh, I've probably been away a lot more than I probably wanted to be um, and probably a lot more time in France than I probably needed to be. But that's just how it worked out. Yes. And um, I was going to say, you know, I think when you start a new job, you always have that transition period where you're getting to know the team and you're having a lot of meetings and things like that. But it sounds like you've been able to kind of manage that quite well, even given the travel restrictions. Yes, it, it, we've I've managed quite well to to get around to meet everybody. And as I say, you know, France has sort of been the European hub of everything that we do. I, I haven't got to America yet to 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 meet the the team and the people there, um, or haven't been to Australia. I got to the UK through the second half of the year last year once or twice, but that that really, you know, the UK was a bit of a no go area for a while. So really. Um, between everything, we, we've managed to keep in touch with Zoom calls and w with emails and uh, and general telephone calls. So it's been it's been a challenge, but it's been good. Brilliant. And um, so your official role is the COO. So you know what does that re what does that entail day to day and and kind of in the, the broader scheme of things at Ashikab? Yeah, I think it's it's more of a coordinating role uh, with with the with everything every. Country has, um, you know, has some senior people in it. My base is is Qatar, um, where head office is, and obviously the the accounts team, the Sheikh's office is, is in Qatar. So, uh, strictly speaking, my my base is there. But um, I'm going to Qatar uh, at the end of this month, and we'll be there for a few weeks and take in the the Emir Sword meeting in, in in Qatar when I'm there, which is the big international race meeting uh, in Qatar at the uh, towards the end of February. So uh, that will, will be taken in. So from that point of view, um, you know, it's just been a matter of trying to get around everything and to try and coordinate things as much as I can um, and to sort of implement some policies and things that, 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 that the Sheikh wanted to do. Very good. Um, and I'll just take take you back to kind of pre-Alsha Cab and um, you were with Rifa Mustang um, before that, and and I believe that was a company that you kind of were very like part of the the formation of that and and getting that off the ground. Was it was it hard to leave Rifa? It was. It, from Rifa's point of view, it was it was something that I really enjoyed because um, when I had uh, prior to that, I was working for the Curra Race Course. When I left the Curra Race Course, Rifa approached me to do some work for them on a consultancy basis. Uh, they were exploring options. Um, they, they already had an operation in uh, Australia. 
and they were exploring options in Europe. And they asked me, would I do uh, some work for them on the, the options surrounding that, uh, which I did. And then they asked me to, to expand that work and, and to do another tranche of work for them, which, which I also did. And at the end of that, they came and they asked me, would, would I uh, join them full time as the European CEO, which, which I did as well. And so that was going very well. And um, it was close to my heart because I had been involved in it from, from the very, very start. Um, but obviously, when Al Shagab came along, it was, uh, you know, it, it was a huge opportunity to go to such a big international operation. And, the, you know, the scale of the Al Shagab um, operation is huge with numbers of forces and training, numbers of stallions um, and, and the international aspect of it. And when I met um, Sheikh Joan in, in uh, Doha last February, you know, it became very clear to me that he, you know, he certainly had had great enthusiasm and he had great ambition for for, for Al Shagab and he wanted to get it back to where it, where it had been. And um, you know, so hopefully I can play a, a part and h- help them along that road. Definitely, and I I don't want to dwell too much on the past, but you did bring up the Kura there, and certainly that was where I met you, and I think a lot of people associated you with the Kura. You know, what were some of your maybe happier memories from from being at the Kura? I had some great times at the Curra. It's you know the, the the thing with the Curra, it's it's such an international race course, and um, there's the training ground there as well, and you know so there's a lot of lot of lot of great times there. Um, you know that that you, we went to. I had 14 years there. I was probably 20 years in total with the Turf Club because I had spent six years prior to that working with the Turf Club and the Integrity Services Department, um, stewarding and that sort of thing. So I had you know nearly 20 years with 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 the the Turf Club Inc. Um, um, and um, as I say, great times at the Curra. Um, we had a small, dynamic team there, and we got through a lot. And um, you know, it was uh, it was a great, great time. Brilliant. And I mean, when you were leaving the Curra, was doing something like you're doing now, kind of what you had in mind, or you know, were you just open to exploring everything? I was open to exploring everything at the time. Uh, the Curra had changed, and there was a new board. There was new ownership. There was, you know, a lot of things there. So I felt it was time to to make a move. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do at the time. Um, I know I'd been approached by a number of people to do different things for them, and um, so when I left, I, I you know, the Reefa Mustang thing came along. I was also doing um, a number of different things on a consultancy basis. I was doing some work for people with um, on race course things, you know. I was looking at sponsorship portfolios for for some people. I was looking at uh, doing quite a bit of work on uh, race courses uh, from an agronomy point of view, and lo- you know, looking at their, their race tracks and uh, training centres and all weather gallops and things. Like that. So there was a lot of stuff like that that sort of came along. And then when Reefa came along, um, you know, certainly, you know, prior to all of that, I, I had a sort of an extensive background in the in the whole bloodstock and racing industry, and it certainly, and right the way through my current time, I've always sort of kept a few mares and you know kept a, an interest in. Uh, the, the whole bloodstock world. So when you know Reefa came along, it certainly rekindled uh, that aspect of what I was doing. So I, I was delighted to do it, and um, certainly you know hopefully that's been a stepping stone into where I am now. Definitely. And um, you mentioned the scale of Al Shakab there and the different countries that it operates in, um, and that Sheikh Johan has you know this idea for what Al Shakab should become and and what it is doing at the minute. In terms of the plan. You know, how is it looking and kind of where where could we see Al Shakab in the future? Well, I think, you know, Al Shakab had a, you know, when, when Al Shakab started first and, uh, and Sheikh Joan was very active at, uh, at the top of the market and they enjoyed some tremendous success in, in the early years you know, with, with some of the stallions, with the horses that are now stallions for us. So, you know, Toronado, Olympic Glory, Trev, of course, was, you know, was the was the the, 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 the flagship um, for, for a long time. So all of those horses, you know, brought tremendous success in the early years. And then it just, I think the operation has, has, uh, went a little bit quiet for a few years, so uh, you know the, the shake is keen to to pick that up. So, I think if you look at where where it is at the moment, there's um, I think the racing is obviously where, where we're all going to be judged. But there's a huge breeding operation there as well, and you know in total there's there's 15 stallions uh, that Al Shagabi their own completely or are, are partners in worldwide. So, you know there's, there's the nine in France that that everybody knows about, but there's you know there's two. There's um, Cozan and Mishuish in, in America, and then there's uh, partnership horses both here in Ireland and and uh, and elsewhere. So uh, there's a lot going on on that front, and then there's a lot of horses going to training. Um, Al Shigab was very active at the yearling sales this year, which it hadn't been for a while. 
Um, and, you know, in total, I think there, there's over 92-year-olds of, of this year to, to go into train this year, uh, together with the horses that have remained in training. So I think, you know, all going well and a little bit of luck on our side, I, I think, you know, the, 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 there could be some good times ahead. Definitely. And um, you mentioned the stallions there and obviously Memas, who's um, standing in Ireland at Tally Ho, stood, you know, I mean, he just blew everyone away last year with his success as champion first season sire. Yes, he was He was fantastic. He was, um, I think, everybody expected him to get lots of winners. Um, but I don't think anybody really expected the, the quality to come through that has come through. And, and um, you know, the, the guys in Tally Ho, you know, they've done a fantastic job there with him. And, um, you know, it, he certainly was a phenomenal um, sire of two-year-olds this year, or last year, I should say. And and hopefully, you know, he, he, he will do the same next year. There has been... Um, you know, there's, there's a big crop of horses and the horses sold very well at the sales as well. So fingers crossed that he'll continue to progress. And, you know, he, I, I was speaking to Roger the other day and he was just saying to me, he said, they're inundated with applications for him at, at, you know, at, at his increased stud fee, which, you know, in, in, in hindsight, you know, it, it may have been too little. But if you look at, yeah, if you look at, um, you know, if you look at where, you know, Invincible Spirit, those sort of horses went over the years. Um, you know, I think he's still very good value at 25,000. You know, breeders are queuing up to get into him again. Definitely. And um, obviously this year now you've got kind of four stallions, I believe, who have their uh, first runners. Um, headed yes. by here, I believe. And he's quite a classy horse. Yeah, there, there, there are three very interesting horses in France at, at Harad de Bucteau in France uh, that all had their first runners this year. So you, you, you've Alu Queer, who, who's absolutely really, really classy, classy horse, uh, Group One winner over a mile, and and um, you know top top class horse in France. Uh, Ecto, who once again was a Group One winner over a mile, very very good uh, looking horse, big strong, uh, athletic horse. You know did well internationally also, and. Uh, you know, Zelzal as well, who's a Sea the Stars horse, once again, a group one winner over a mile. So, you know, they're, they're three very exciting horses and they've all had good books of mares, have been well supported by Al-Shigab. Um, you know, the, their fees have dropped a little bit this year to try and get, uh, to make sure that, that you know, their, their numbers stay high. But, um, you know, I think that there could be three exciting horses and then Galileo Gold uh, is a stable mate of, of Maymas and Tally Ho. He's a, a partnership horse again with, with Tally Ho and, um, you know, we we hope with big hopes for him as well. So there's there's four of them with the first runners this year, which is which is going to be very exciting. And I know it's very early days, but have you kind of had any reports on any of the, their progeny on how they're getting on? Yes, we're we're hearing some good stuff. I think that the initial reports come from the the breeze up guys, and you know, Annie, we we've, we've heard some little whispers about about a few of them so far. So, um, you know, hopefully they turn into results. But I think it's always good to hear the breeze up guys speaking positively uh, about them at this stage, and and um, you know, hopefully this time last year, apparently there was there was quite a bit of chat about Maymas. So hopefully uh, that that will follow too again this year. Oh, brilliant. And um, you've two new stallions joining the roster at, at Bukato in um, Wooded and Romanized. And I want to start off with Wooded because I can imagine that he's probably quite popular seeing as his sire has now left France. Yes, he's he's really popular, and it's 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 funny. He he was a horse. Francis Grafford, you know, was really really keen on him all year, and he just didn't really things didn't go his way last year. He started off the year, uh, won his Group Three, and was destined to to go to Royal Ascot uh, from there. And then obviously COVID hit. There were travel problems. Um, Francis at the last minute with Zoom from from Ascot. Um, then he had a couple of races in France during the summer, but nothing really came right for him on, on, until the uh, pre de Labbe at the end of the year. And I had been speaking to Francis and I was, I was encouraging. I was saying, maybe, you know, would you have a look at the Flying Five? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a race that might suit him. But um, Francis, in fairness to him, he said he wanted to, to run him in a, in a Group 3 over 5 at Longchamp. 
uh, in advance of the um, Prix de l'Abbé, which he did, and he ran second there. And he certainly learned his trade as a sprinter there, and he went on and he won the Prix de l'Abbé. Subsequently, beating the beating the, the winner of the Flying Five and the the the, the Philly uh, Glass Slippers, who actually won the Breeders' Cup as well. So, you know, it, it was um, it was a fantastic win. And as you say, with with Wooden Bassett going to Coolmore, um, we thought long and hard about whether we'd keep him in training or not, but we felt that there was every year to um, to retire the son of Wooden Bassett in France. He finished his year on a high as a Group 1 winner, and, you know, it, it seemed to make an awful lot of sense. Definitely. And and what's he like physically? He's a lovely horse. Yeah, he's, he's a fine big horse, and, and, and he stands over um, a, a nice bit of ground, um, and you know, just very well balanced horse, good mover. Um, you know, for a lot of those sprinters, you know, you, you imagine sort of a real strong, sort of a crotchety fella that's that's that, that flies, but he, he's actually big, you know, athletic horse with really good loose mover and uh, very correct. So, uh, I think he's you know, he, he's an exciting stallion. Definitely. And Roman, I, you know, I, I kind of always admired him throughout his racing career because obviously, you know, he was trained by Ken Condon, who's, you know, a really lovely guy as well as a great trainer. But he was just one of those horses that was always consistently, you know, he was always there and he always put in a really good performance. And obviously when he won the Guineas, you know, everyone was delighted. Um, but how did it come about for him to join the Al Shikab roster? He's um, he's at Al Shigab now. He's he's uh, not owned by Al Shigab. He's he's standing at, at Harada Bukto. Um, I think the the link there is probably to our our racing manager, who Rupert Pritchard Gordon, who is also Mr. Nas' uh, racing manager. So that's that's the the link. But so he's going to stand at. Um, Harada Bukto in a, in, a, in a partnership arrangement as well, but he, he, there, there's no um, there's no ownership from from Al Shikab in him. So, um, but he's an exciting horse to have there. As you say, he's you know he's a horse that I, I followed right the way through, and he was he was on our radar for for a long time. We were um, we were giving Rupert little reminders all along that if he was ever retiring to studs, um, we might have a stable for him. So, um, so thankfully he's he's retired to Harada Bukto now and. Um, you know, he, he, he's an exciting horse and, and I believe he's very, very uh, popular. There's a lot of people have come to see him over the last few weeks. Uh, yeah, he's a really, really good racehorse as well. You know, when, you know, any horse that wins an Irish Guineas, is, 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 you know, you, you can't discount that. And, you know, he, he proved it. He, he was very unlucky to be disqualified in the race in France. Um, so you know he's again he's a Group One winner over a mile. He's um, he's a horse that's, that was proven at you know right the way two, two, three, four, and five. Um, so from some new boys to the kind of more established horses on the roster. I mean, January started off quite well for Olympic Glory and Shala. Yeah, no, there's you know there's there's a, there's a good mix in in at Harada Bukto at the moment. There, there's nine stallions there, so as you said, there's there's the three that have they're having their first runners this year. There's the two new stallions, and then there's the the four older boys. So you know we we ruler the world there now. Who's a, who was a Epsom Derby winner who who was in Coolmore for a few years, and he he's done very well in France. Actually, he, he covered a very good book of mares. Uh, Tornado and Olympic Glory have had. Both very very good years last year, um, and they're they're both doing very very well. Uh, Tornado is having an exceptional time in in Australia, believe it or not, and uh, he goes down every year there. He goes down to Adam Sangster, and you know Adam's done a fantastic job with him, and, he, and he's tremendously popular down there, and, and he's been very successful. Uh, Shala then had his first runners in Europe last year. And um, obviously, he's having his first runners in in Australia at the moment. And um, you know, he he had the, had the winner of the Magic Millions last week, which was a great start for him. Um, I think I think he's going to be a surprise package in Europe this year because a lot of the mayors that went to him were um, there were more sort of classic type mayors. There were you know mile and a half mayors, a lot of Galileo mayors. When you went through his book, uh, it was amazing just to see when you compared his book, say with with Maymass's book. Uh, he had a different um, different type of mayor went to him, so I think it was going to be a lot to come from him um, this year. In, in that he he had a solid year last year, but he probably just didn't really have the the top horse. So we've some we've some very nice ones ourselves that are um, due to go into training that are due to um, run this year that haven't run yet. And the, we had a winner last week um, in the south of France by him, which was first three year old uh, of the year in the south of France. So that that's been very good. 
No, very exciting. Well, I won't take up too much more of your time, uh, Paul, but I do have one important question to ask, and that is, you said earlier that um, the hub of Al Shakab is based in France. So how good is your French? Uh, it's not as good as it should be, Alan, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, it's not as good as it should be. I'm, I'm working hard on Duolingo and on, on, yeah. on online training or whatever else. So um, I'm getting there. I understand most things, but I'm still uh, still a good way off the pace, a good way off the pace. <laughs> Well, I'm sure with a bit more time in lockdown, you'll be able to speak French fluently in no time. And um, I hope Ashikad have a fantastic year. And thank you so much for joining us. Not at all. Pleasure as always. Thank you.